Mrs. Gabriela Tognola, you are an Italian researcher of the National Council. Um, which are the most important topics about uh, e-health in audiology? Uh, there are many, many, many topics uh, and because uh, we are now facing a sort of a silent revolution uh, on the way in which uh, uh, hearing healthcare is, uh, uh, is done. Uh, in this sense, uh, e-health has been uh, uh, adopting in many many fields of the hearing and care in a way that uh, we have uh, named this new model of the hearing and care like the e-health for hearing model and essentially there is a sort of uh, uh, change between the traditional way in which these uh, services are offered to the patient in the traditional way the patient can assess to the different services but only with the interimposition of uh, another subject, for example the technician or the professional. Now with the use of the new ICT technologies, the patient can herself assess to these uh, very services, very different services, uh, mostly in most cases even without any, any other people. Uh, look at, for example, there are many um, ways in which you can assess your hearing at home or through the, the internet, or there are many ways in which you can have uh, an amplification of, of the sound, both with a hearing aid, but in this case the hearing aid is not uh, a traditional hearing aid, because in this case you have some application the apps that you can download from the marketplace, and uh, with this app you can manage, you can fit by yourself the hearing aid, or in other case you can use uh, the so-called personal sound amplifier, which are devices that uh, allow people without uh, a hearing aid to amplify the sounds uh, using the uh, smartphone. And uh, there are many, many other examples, for example, regarding uh, the intervention. Uh, I mean, you can have uh, oral rehabilitation through the internet. And there are many other examples regarding for, uh, the uh, education, because uh, we are now in a new era, it seems that many people can assess or many people have um, very, very, very powerful technological uh, equipment, but many people do not know how, how to use. Uh, and in other cases, there are many, many other applications that you can find in the marketplace that are addressing the, the needs for the, of the patient, but in that case, uh, there is a need of some people, for example the professional or the technician, that have to evaluate this, uh, this application. So we are facing this new change in the hearing health care and also the professional realizing that they cannot uh, do, uh, that they cannot, uh, I mean, uh, um, stop this, uh, this change. But now it is the very time in which we have to collaborate all together to provide very uh, quality uh, of, the, uh, of these uh, services to the patient. Yes, and um, what about the, the next challenges in uh, uh, education of uh, people impaired and uh, professional too? Yeah, you're right, because uh, we have to educate both the users and both the professional. And, uh, because it's not a matter on how you can implement this new technology, but it's the matter on how you use this new technology, on how you uh, can understand that this type of services is really what you need. Because, just for example, if you look on the marketplace of, of, the, of the app, both Android and the iOS, there are many, many applications also developed by um, independent people, so people without any background in, in the hearing science field. So this is the case, how did this new technology work? And also for what concerns, for example, the self-testing, there is a need to validate this test, to have some check that before you start the test, the equipment has to say that the equipment is working well, your earphones are well calibrated, the room noise is not too loud and, and, and so on. Thank you so much. You're welcome.